This podcast is being held in the lands of the Wurundjeri Woi Wurrung people. We wish to pay our respects to Elders past, present and emerging. This podcast is for mental health educational purposes only and should not be relied on as personal advice. Always seek the guidance of a health professional regarding your physical and or mental health. Opinions expressed are solely those of the individuals involved and may not reflect the views of the Mental Health Foundation Australia. This episode features a personal story of mental health. If you find yourself distressed, please reach out to Mental Health Foundation Australia's National Helpline at 1300 643 287 or Lifeline at 13 11 14. Everyone has their own unique story. Empowering Voices of Harmony welcomes all members of the community to have open and inclusive conversations surrounding their lived experiences. Season two will introduce individuals from a range of diverse backgrounds who have found harmony and community despite their struggles. Hear from our guests in their native languages to obtain a full grasp of the difficulties and strengths that it takes to become a truly empowered voice. My name is Shannon Sykes. I uh, diagnosed bipolar 2 um, and unfortunately I've been diagnosed this way since I was nine. Um, it all came about, I was having a few uh, issues, anger issues, suppression, my anger as a youth. Uh, got into a lot of trouble at school. Um, one day I could be an angel and the next day with no realisation on my behalf, uh, my world would just spin upside down and I'd lash out. Um, my my family took me to a uh, a psychiatrist at the time, who, after having one session, turned around to my parents and said, "I can't be helped until I'm ready to help myself." Now, mind you, I was nine years old. So, how does a nine year old interpret what help they need to give themselves? And they diagnosed me as manic depressive and apparently I had to help myself first. So my parents sort of gave up on me. Um, I left home at 14 because um, nothing really changed. I didn't get the support that I needed. I sort of had to navigate life on my own um, from, well, from the age of 14, but realistically from the age of nine. I, yeah, I... I suppose what I started drinking um, at around 14, started drinking a lot because uh, it was the only way for me to clear my head. I, did, I had no other tools around. Um, obviously, back then, there was no medication um, given. So my head was always go, 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 never stopped. It was, there was always something and it was going a million miles an hour. And the only way I figured out how to settle it down was alcohol. Um, and unfortunately for me, I drank up until 2019. So I self-medicated that whole time. Um, I went through life. I, I lived on the edge. I got involved with the Chinese triad. Um, I spent quite a number of years living on the edge, doing things that most people probably wouldn't do in life. Um, but these are things that I just thought were normal. And in reflection now, I look back and, you know, I, I, I live to the extreme. I, which when you're living in the moment, you just don't realise. They're just tools that you undertake in order to survive, I suppose. Like the drinking, drugs, um, promiscuity, you know, putting yourself in danger. Um, because it, it's not like it's an adrenaline rush, it's just... That's what your life has to be. It's just chaos. And until until you, you know, find the avenues to give you the tools to help deal with that chaos and process that chaos, um, it's you, you do what you sort of have to do to survive, I suppose. Life uh, life doesn't stop. Life keeps moving whether you whether you're in control of it or not. So, you know, um, it got to points numerous times where Everything was too much. I, um, like like most people going through mental health issues, I attempted suicide numerous times. Um, growing up, I self-harmed. I used to cut myself. Um, used to cut my arms, and that was therapeutic to me. 
which now I'm covered in tattoos, which I suppose was, I started to do it to, I enjoyed the, the feeling of it, a needle going into you constantly, and now I can sit there for 12 hours and have a tattoo done at the one time. Um, I got to a point where I was covering my scars, but it was also replacing the, the, the need for self-harming. So, you know, needles going into your body consistently for 12 hours is not a pleasant experience, but for me, I actually enjoy it. Sometimes I fall asleep. So it's become sort of therapeutic, um, but I've also only got them in spots where I can cover them because I've always, believe it or not, going through all of that that I did, I've always had a job, I've always worked full-time, Basically, I've been a high-functioning bipolar person. Um, work never found out when I tried to suicide. Um, you know, I was a high-functioning alcoholic but at the same time. You learn, which most people with mental health issues, learn to convince the world that they're fine. Um, when you're not... Life, you know, you're not plain and simple. You can bluff the world. You can tell the world whatever you think they want to hear and you're really good at covering things up, let's be honest. Anytime someone refers you to a doctor because they're a bit worried, you, you know how to bluff the doctor. You know what they want to hear. And you, you, <laughs> you learn how to read people and you just tell people what they want to hear and you just get through it and you move on and then you just go back to your chaos because it's... I suppose it's your comfort, in a way. It um, chaos is is where you live and what you get through, and it's how you deal with the everyday, because you don't know any different. Um, you know, but that chaos has led me to a lot of dark places. It's also led me to, uh, you know, as I said, I self medicated for a very long time. Well, even longer than a long time. I own thirty odd years is a very very long time um, but all of that you know mental health leading into alcoholism um, or self-medication uh, then in turn cost me a leg I'm now a left leg below knee amputee because you know once again living on the edge doing things to the extreme drinking like there was no tomorrow and I would drink until I passed out um, you know but it got me into a situation where I probably shouldn't have been um, the, and yeah, ultimately it's cost me a leg. So not only has mental health, you know, uh, made me self-medicate and try and cope with the world in a different way, but then it gave me another disability, which in turn has made made my life even harder because I then had to deal with the disability. So you know, uh, going from being completely independent, obviously leaving home at fourteen. Um, to initially being confined to a wheelchair, uh, only being able to stand up on one leg, going to a shopping centre and a lot of things are up on the top shelf. And when you're stuck in a wheelchair, it's very hard to get them. And being a stubborn, independent person, you don't really want to ask people for help. But, you know, you've got to learn then that, unfortunately, sometimes you've got to ask for it. Um, so... You know, initially after the break, I so I broke my leg at first and then multiple surgeries turned into an amputation in order to get rid of the pain. But out of all of that, which a lot of times when more things happen to you is the one time that most of you will agree is when you get into even darker places. But for some reason, for me, it was a catalyst of changing my life. <laughs> I'm getting upset about it because the darkest part of my night absolutely showed me the dawn and it was the most, the weirdest thing. Once I knew that my leg was coming off, well, prior to, I knew that my leg had to come off. So I made a decision then and there that I had to stop drinking. So I went into rehab, took myself to rehab, spent a month away from my child, um, locked up in a facility with other people, and obviously through that, there was a lot of counselling. There was a lot of group sessions. Um, and I learned tools to deal with things and, and, and I suppose deal with things in a different way rather than self-medicating. Um, 
you know, when I when I had a child, I I I really became depressed because my life. Now that I look back on it, I realised my life was no longer my own. I had somebody else that was relying on me, and I had to make some changes. So I I became really depressed to the point where I pushed everything away, and I was on a lounge for for months. Didn't want to talk to anyone. Didn't want to know anyone. Drank more. Smoked more. Um, and then it, I just realised that I really needed help and I... <laughs> it's funny how the memories come back and they just <laughs> elicit emotion. Um, I finally put my hand up and I said to my wife at the time that I really need help. <laughs> admitting that there's an issue and admitting that it's time is a very hard thing. But until you get to that point yourself... Anyone can throw help at you and it's never going to make a difference because you need to want the help. You're never going to use the help unless you absolutely want the help. Um, and I, I was I was tired. <sighs> I was tired of the facade, I suppose. I was tired of trying to show the world that I was happy when I was absolutely miserable and I just didn't know what was going on. I faked every day of my life. I mean, I've been successful in everything I've done. I've always landed on my feet, pun intended. I can't do that now, just one foot. Um, and you do, you, you, you learn to bluff the world. But the minute I put my hand up and, uh, and I, I, I said I need help, my wife at the time, you know, worked with me and we found a psychiatrist who I saw then for 10 years. Um, you know, once you find someone that helps you you don't just walk away from it. So I went through the processes. You know, we got into, um, I got into group therapy. I got into the psychiatrist. I got, uh, also saw a psychologist at the time. I found support groups. Um, but it takes that one step because when you're by yourself, you can't see any help on the horizon. Um, but once you find that one person who can help, it just steamrolls into the next bit of help, the next bit of help, the next bit of help. Just like when I lost my leg. Prior to that, I met my support coordinator, Dima, um, from Nola Stray Support. And luckily for me, she had been a prosthetist uh, in a previous life. And she told me that there was help I was going to need that I just went, no, I won't. But it turned out she was absolutely right. And processing, dealing with my leg and moving forward and getting back to work and getting back to sport, everything she did for me just helped me see the light, find the light, live the light and be the light. So, um, you know, for, finding people that help is the hardest part, but once you've got it, don't let go. Because um, the help is exponential. You know, support groups are paramount because generally support groups... You're around peers who are dealing with the same issues. They're going through the same things. They un understand the same, um, the same issues, the same choices, the same you know things that you're processing, whether it be addiction. Because let's be honest, mental health and other issues go hand in hand. People self-medicate, whether it's drugs, alcohol. You live on the ledge. You are completely promiscuous. You basically your mind. Even if you think you want thing, your mind's telling you to do something else, and it's a very confusing time. But all of these, all of these people I found and the groups that I was with, absolutely helped me exponentially. It took time. I mean, nothing happens overnight. I, I, I got myself into a position where it had taken me thirty years of, you know, um, oh, not even thirty years. So from nine to thirty-seven, so almost thirty years. It took me thirty years of living in a certain way, and then putting my hand up. So I knew it was never going to be a quick fix. It um, it all takes time, and and times what I gave it. I had nothing else to lose. I still worked and whatnot, but I I went through the processes, and as I said, I wanted the change. Now my true change has only come in the last two years, three years, since I chopped my leg off. So it still took me a further thirteen. Oh, no, so 20, yeah. Uh, it still took me another 10 years to, to get the appropriate tools, process everything and find my light. 
Um, I no longer drink. I'm five years sober. I don't smoke. I exercise every day, uh, whether it be the gym or I go for a walk. I now play wheelchair AFL. Um, I've just finished the season with St Kilda. I play wheelchair basketball. I coach my daughter's basketball team, um, you know, and team manager. And all of this has come about because I finally embraced my life. I finally embraced who I am. Um, like everyone, I've got bad parts and I've got good parts, but I try not to, you know, uh, I guess the tools that I've learned over the time is people are going to judge you, irrespective of what you're going through. So, but if you're worrying about what other people are thinking, you're living their life, not yours. Um, I'm at a point now where I just live my life because I want to make it a certain thing. I want to give my daughter a life. I want to make sure that I'm around to watch my daughter grow up. If she chooses to get married, if she chooses to have kids, I want to be around for all of that. And what I was doing and not and not using the help that was around me wasn't helping me. So now, as I said, I'm in complete control of my life. I know my triggers. I know that um, pushing myself too hard can get me down into that um, into that dark space again. So I know when I'm starting to get tired that I need to step back and take time out. Um, you know, I I have people around me that I know if I need to talk because let's be honest, talking can be paramount. Um, expressing yourself. And having someone just listen impartially is a, is a really big thing. Um, people will judge you. So choose who you talk to because you'll find people who apparently want to give you all the answers even though they may not know any of them. Um, but truly finding someone who will listen and not judge because majority of us with mental health, sometimes we just want to talk. We don't want answers. We don't need answers. We just want, once we've said things, it tends to lighten our mind up a bit. Just getting it out of your brain tends to allow your brain to free flow, to get the oxygen moving around. You know, it's, it's the simple things, which as ironic as it sounds, just being able to talk and not have anyone give you an answer can make the biggest world of difference to yourself. And hence the reason, as I said before, support groups have been great for me because they give you the floor for a minute, you get up and talk your story, and then sit down. There's nobody telling you, I know you're wrong, or you shouldn't have done that. It's just your life. You've had the opportunity to talk, you process in yourself, and if need be, you'll go and talk to someone about it later on a different, in a different way. But these little tools you know, are the things that are going to make the biggest difference. And I mean, talking about, you know, your mind going from one thing to the other, I've just realised upon thinking right now is that my story's gone from one side to another and back again and I didn't even realise. So my mind still goes a million miles an hour. It's just, you know, you're halfway through a story and you think of something else and then all of a sudden, oh, hang on, let me tie it back in. So... Your mind's never going to change that aspect. It's always going to go a million miles an hour. It's about how you process and what tools you find for yourself that are going to make the biggest difference. Because everyone's story is different. What works for me may not work for someone else. But one thing I have realised, which is important for everyone, is exercise. Getting your mind out into nature or getting your body out into nature makes the biggest difference. You... Um, you're breathing fresh air, you're hearing birds, even if you hear traffic. I mean, for me, I put headphones on, I pump music, because music is the one thing that I've always escaped in. And I just get out and walk. I, for me, it works. You know, music and nature is my happy place. It relaxes me. And alternatively, I get on my Harley and go for a ride, because that relaxes me too. So... Um, you know, you, you find the tools that make you happy because living a life that's strained is puts a lot of stress on your own brain. And the harder you strain your life, the more stress you put on your brain. And the more stress your brain's under, the more turmoil you live in. And it's just never-ending patterns. As I said, 
I self-medicated, that exacerbated my mental health. My mental health, in turn, exacerbated my drinking. My drinking then, in turn, exacerbated my mental health. So it was just that one life of cycle that just kept going and going and going and going. But until I got the help that I needed, or until, sorry, until I realised I needed the help and I asked for it, when I got that help, my life just started to get better. And as I said, it took a long time, but it was one step at a time. Um, you know, or I'm launching a podcast myself later this year called One Foot Forward, because that's all you can do. Just put one foot forward at a time, you know. In recovery, they tell you one day at a time, and that's all you can ever live. Just if you're not taking one step at a time and you're concentrating too far in the future, you're not realising what you need in order to get to where you want to be. You know, my first thing was sobriety. I had to be sober. Um, so now, as I said, I'm five years sober. I absolutely love it. I um, the, the irony is I don't miss alcohol at all. Do not miss it. I can go out to clubs or, you know, to a bar, meet friends, a restaurant. It does not bother me. I just drink water. Um, you know, once I got sober, then I went, okay, I want to stop smoking. So the day before they chopped my leg off, I just said, that's it, no more smokes. If my life's changing tomorrow, everything's changing. So I made that decision and that was it. I haven't had a cigarette in three years. Um, you know, it's just the small things. Find one goal that you want first, work on that. Just make it small. Don't, setting yourself big goals sets yourself up for failure. You, they might be long-term goals. They might be 10-year goals. That's fine. You can plan that. But in order to get to the big plan, you've got to take a single step. So you need to set yourself really simple goals. First thing, if you want help, ask for it. Secondly, the hardest part of asking for help is then taking the help because we're all individuals, we're all independent and we all think that we don't need people but the reality is we do. Um, and, and taking, accepting help is a very hard thing for people with mental health issues because you've then got to admit to yourself that you have an issue. Um, I have bipolar. I'm always going to have bipolar. I, you know, I have mental health issues. I, I'm not, never going to step away from that now because it is who I am. I own who I am. My life is better now because I can fully embrace and admit that I do have my issues. Um, I own my issues and I've learned the tools that work for me um, as I said, for me, it's exercise, it's, you know, doing all these extra sports, it's you know, not drinking, smoking, it's getting on my motorbike, it's spending time with my daughter. Um, you know, I found the tools that work for me and my life is so much better, which I never thought was possible, but I took it one step at a time. So for me, it was no drinking. Once that was, I knew that was done and under control, then I made the next step, okay, no smoking. But all that time, I was still engaged in in the healing process of of having others help me my psychiatrist i mean i went through so many different mood stabilizers we tried them all and you know some i absolutely lost all emotion like i felt like a robot all i did was talk i had no i couldn't engage with anything and i've been in sales my whole life like i work on emotion i make i elicit emotion in other people in order to get them to you know, to buy things. Um, that, that was my life. That's how I lived. And, and mood stabilizers took that away. But I had to try them all in order to see whether any worked, some worked or none worked. In the end, we found one that did work. So once, you know, I got on top of that and we were stabilized and whatnot, we stayed on it for a bit longer. Once I stopped drinking, then we looked at titrating it down. Um, you know, and now I just got to a point where I don't take any mood stabilizers, but that's because I'm not exacerbating my issues with alcohol. Um, you know, I'm not, um, uh, I'm not smoking. So nicotine is also something else that obviously exacerbates things. Uh, as, as weird as it sounds, putting pollutants in your body is no good for your mental health. Um, and I, look, you probably hear it all the time. I get that. I was a part of it where people told me, don't do this. You know what? Make your own decisions. But just remember, other people have been through stuff and 
they offer you tools in the hope that you don't have to get to the points that they did. Um, you know, my my life was hard. You know, you try leaving home at 14. Um, I don't talk to family. Um, my father died and no one in my family rang me to let me know. I was friends with a couple of them on Facebook, um, but they all went on holidays together, every single one of them. I was not invited. They took photos and tagged each other. And I went, you know what? I'm not a part of the family. Nobody wants me in it. So I just cut it off. And I had to make that decision as well. Not one person rang me to check in to say, hey, I noticed you deleted us. Is everything okay? Not one. So I made the right decision for me, for my sanity, for my mental health. I just went, okay. Not everyone that produces children should have children. Not everyone that is a sibling should be a sibling. Um, and I'm okay with that now. It took a long time for me to process and say, it's fine. I have my daughter. She is the absolute apple of my eye. <laughs> she's been, <laughs> oh, let me tell you, she's been a huge help. Anytime, you know, when I, when I had my leg chopped off, she always, hey, Dad, can I help you with this? Can I get this for you? Can I do this? Um, you know, I had to teach her that I'm still an independent person. I'm, because she doesn't live with me, um, you know, only every second weekend, I had to say to her, I need to try it for myself first because you're not always around. So if I need help, I'll ask for it, but I really appreciate your offering. Now she sees that life is, you're always going to have challenges, but I'm hoping that I've taught her that irrespective of what's in front of you, there's always ways that you can overcome it. You know, I went to shopping centres, I got out of my wheelchair up on one leg and grabbed things off the top shelf. But then it also got to a point where I said to myself, you know what, you are a stubborn bugger. You don't have to be. If someone offers you help, just take it. So in the end, I learned that too. People go, oh, can I guess? That would be great. Thank you so much. Really appreciate it. And it made my job easy, made my life easy because I wasn't stressed then. I'm just like, okay, beautiful. You know, it's, I, I, I suppose, as I said, it's the small things. The small things can make the biggest difference, but you don't realise until you release yourself from stressing about them. Um, I'm proud. I'm, I'm, I'm a very independent, proud man. I had to be, leaving home at 14. You don't know anything else. Um, but then I realised I don't have to be. There are other people in this world that, you know, want to help. Um, there are other people that, you know, that's who they are as people. They're helpers. Not everyone that has a family is your family and not everyone that's not your family is not your family um you know i have a lot of good people in my life that have helped me get to where i am i have not done it alone um and if i hadn't have met these people and they hadn't have come into my life i certainly wouldn't be where i am now but it took me asking for help in order to find the help and you know as i said the hardest part of any mental health battle is admitting that you have an issue because the one person who's always going to be hardest on ourselves is us. We judge ourselves worse than anyone else. As you all know, we put so much pressure on ourselves because we don't want the world to know that we're battling. We want the world to see that we are fun. We are the life of the party. So we'll go out and we'll show the world that we're having great times. And then we'll go home and we'll cry ourselves to sleep where no one can see. We will lock ourselves in a dark room and we'll have battle demons that no one ever wants to see. As I said, I couldn't do it alone. I'm now in a place where I am doing it alone, but I didn't get there by being alone. I got there by asking for help and going through the right channels. Um, you know, I've, I'm now integrated with Mental Health Foundation of Australia because, once again, there's still tools around and people around and, you know, groups around. People just want, want to give opportunity for people to live their best life. And, you know, it's foundations like the Mental Health Foundation that, that really do want to make the world a better place and make your world a better place and make a world of difference. So if you've stumbled across them, it's for a reason. It's because obviously you were looking um, we don't start, we don't find things in life unless we're actually looking for them, or we don't find them unless it's exactly what we need in life. And let's be honest, 
most of you people with mental health issues will always end up in situations where you're meant to be, for good or bad. I don't regret anything I've done in life. I mean, I should, but the reason I don't is because it's made me who I am now. Every battle I've faced, every demon I've <coughs> slayed, every family I've forgotten um, has made me who I am. And I just changed my life. I got out of um, sales. I'd had enough. Um, been in it 40, well, 30 odd years. And now I'm an independent support worker. I want to give back to the world through my lived experience. I now, as I said, my life is so much better and so much more rewarding because I'm giving back to the world that gave to me. Yeah, I faced a lot of battles. I faced a lot of demons. and I, But I also pushed a lot of what, things away that probably could have made my life better. Um, but I, didn't, I couldn't get the help that I needed until I was ready for it. And when I was, I put my hand up. And now, as I said, I want to give back to the world in a different capacity. I get more reward now for seeing change in other people just by being a mentor to them. I don't counsel people. I, you know, I'll kick a footy around with some of my clients and sometimes that's enough for people because there's no pressure. All we're doing is just hanging out, chilling and having fun. But sometimes that gives people the opportunity to open up and talk because there's no pressure. You know, it doesn't matter where you talk. It doesn't matter where you get to clear your mind, as long as you clear your mind, because mental health is all about confusion. Your brain does not stop. From bipolar, I know that my mind still goes a million miles an hour. But I've also realised when it is, and now I pull myself back, and I, I structure is what works for me. I... Because I'm trying to launch a podcast, because I'm, I've started my own business, I need structure. So, I, And I'm also doing a personal training course. So I now allocate certain periods of my day to say, okay, focus on your podcast for this many hours. Once that's finished, okay, do your invoices. Okay, you've got this client at this time. Okay, you've got your training at this time. Then, So my life now is structure, which... Funnily enough, structures help get rid of the confusion in my mind because I'm now going, okay, forget about all the mess. You've got to do this now. And then I've got to focus on that. And I've, I don't know if any of you, you know, I don't know whether it's ADHD as well, but sometimes I, I, I sort of lose focus when I'm in the moment. I've just got to reel myself back now. I've got to go, no, hang on, you need to do this. You've only got two hours. So I'm still having conversations with myself all day long. But they're more productive conversations now. It's like, no, sh stop, breathe, come back and finish this. You've only got five more minutes. Just get this done. So then I go back, focus, do that, get that done. And, um, you know, as I said, my mind still works faster than it should. Um, but structure. Structure helps. Breathing helps. And, um, and, and exercising, I suppose. That's, yeah. Um, so to conclude, to conclude everything I've sort of stipulated and, and spoke through, um, the first thing I would say is be kind to yourself. So you know what you need. You, you know, the hardest part is agreeing with yourself. You know what you want. Let's be honest. We all know what we want. We all know that we have hopes and dreams. Being lost in a situation and a circumstance is, is confusing and um, sometimes sort of stops you visualising where you want to be. And I get that. But just remember, you always need to put yourself first. If that means cutting out toxic people from your life, whether they be family or not, you've got to do it. Irrespective of how you think it's going to make you feel, your happiness is paramount. Um, people will guilt you into things. Um, you've got to learn to block out the dark noise. You've got to learn... To block out the toxic people and you've got to ask for help from the right people so sometimes the right people are not family they're not friends um you know there's no that there are stigmas in in other people finding out that you're seeing a psychiatrist or a psychologist who cares at the end of the day people that want to have a stigma on what you're doing are trying to keep you in a position where you don't want to be so don't worry about them focus on you and what you need 
get the help, ask for the help, talk to the right people. Don't be embarrassed. I saw a psychiatrist for nearly 10 years. Um, I've seen psychologists, I've seen been in support groups. I'm not embarrassed about it. If people want to judge me, no problem. While they're worrying about what I've been doing, I'm out there living my life, not giving them a second thought in the world. As funny as it sounds, live your life. But ask for the tools that you need, you know. Remember to breathe. Remember that you are allowed to make mistakes. Don't beat yourself up. If you get into a situation and you can't change it, okay, it's done. Stressing about is not going to change the outcome. <clears throat> Just breathe, focus, and worry about the next step. So, you know, as I tell my basketball team, if you miss a shot that you just put up, don't stress about it. It's not going to get the ball back in your hands and put it back up. Worry about taking that next step to get the ball back and then have another shot. It's called resetting. You can't change what's already done. Yes, you're going to make mistakes. Yeah. You might take two steps forward and then one step back. And that's fine too. It's a part of growing. You're not going to learn unless you make mistakes. But what you'll find is the more steps forward you take, and you'll start taking less steps back, which means you're growing. And then once you allow yourself the luxury of finding the tools and listening to the people around you and start figuring out what works for you in a positive manner, as I said, for me, it was riding my Harley, exercising, doing sport, um, you know, and music. You, you need to find those things because... Focus on the happiness, the things that make you happy, and I guarantee you, your life will get easier. It's never going to be 100% easy. I, I can guarantee you that. You're always going to have a mental health issue. It's about the tools that you utilise and, you know, and how you find them and what you do with them. You're in complete control of how you finish your life. You're going to need people to help you figure out those tools how to use those tools, but once you've got those tools, you, your life will get easier. You're still going to have moments. I still have dark days. I still have times where I get depressed, um, but I don't linger in it anymore. I put my headphones on, I put my sneakers on, I go for a walk. Half an hour later, my mind's sort of lifting out a little bit, so I get on my motorbike, go for a ride. As I said, I understand my triggers now, and I work around them. Once you start to... Understand that it's okay to have these things happen, but it's about how to deal with them and process them. Your life will get easier. And every little bit of easier that your life becomes, it just gives you that little bit of hope that you would just want one more bit of easy. And then let me assure you, like life, like all the bad things that we've been through in life, it will steamroll. If you self-medicate, if you smoke, if you do drugs, it's just going to exacerbate everything. If you take one positive step and then another positive step, let me assure you, it's going to exacerbate positive steps. It's just changing the mindset, using the tools around you, using the people around you, and asking for help. Good luck to all of you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you for listening to Empowering Voices of Harmony. Mental Health Foundation Australia is grateful to our guests for sharing their lived experiences, offering hope, and a voice to others. The Mental Health Foundation Australia offers free mental health support groups on various topics, from anxiety, trauma, bipolar disorder, and many more. We also offer affordable counselling sessions at $20 per session at our Wellness Hub Psychology Clinic. Our podcast notes include helpful resources. We hope you found this episode informative. See you next time as we share more empowering voices of harmony.